This is the American Alpine Club's Legacy Series, a video tribute to the visionary climbers who made the sport what it is today, and a commitment to securing their legacies. I would say that it's very hard for you to imagine the future without understanding the past. I was born on June 21st, 1933, in, in Brooklyn, New York. And it was quite an idyllic place uh, in those days. It was all fields and forests. I set up a tree house in an oak tree, and in the course of setting it up, I traversed along one branch holding on to a branch above when the branch that I was standing on broke. And I fell about mm, five or six feet and damned if I wasn't able to catch a hold of another branch. That really gave me a start, but I was quite pleased with myself <laughs> for having grabbed that branch. Then I went to Princeton, and my very first day at Princeton, I'm walking around the campus and I see a sign that says, Princeton Mountaineering Club. Oh, I signed up right away. And the next weekend, we were in the Schwangos. McCarthy rapidly worked his way up the scale of difficulty. His roots of the 50s and 60s advanced the grade from 5'8 into 5'11. I think the first 5'10 move I ever did in the Gunks was a climb called Retribution, which is a pretty hard move. And then there was, I did a couple of other climbs that were in the 5'10 range. And then the, in company with Richard Goldstone, we began to push the 510 rating a, a lot further. McCarthy applied his skills to Yosemite, Colorado, and Wyoming. His climbs established him as one of the premier rock climbers and mountaineers of the second half of the 20th century. I talked Chouinard into producing an article about Yosemite climbing for the American Alpine Journal. And he sent me a, a copy and one of the predictions he made in that article, which was published in 1963, was that he said, Yosemite will be the crucible for learning to climb the great walls of the world. Well, I took that to heart. McCarthy was advised, pick an objective that you feel will contribute something to the development of American climbing. Gather the strongest group of technical climbers, and the American Alpine Club will back the venture. I got this grant in 1963, off we went to the Cirque of the Unclimbables. And Proboscis was the first really big wall that was done in a really remote area. At that time, it was the first big wall that was really done outside of Yosemite. Proboscis was the place where American big wall climbing first bore fruit in the Great Ranges. For the first time in history, America had exported an original climbing style to the global stage. McCarthy went on to climb other important routes that have stood the test of time. He also climbed in the Himalayas at the behest of the CIA. Besides climbing, McCarthy was given several jobs, among which was nuclear technician. So we had a, a base camp where they could land at 15,000 feet. The advanced base camp was probably at about 16.5, Nanda Devi being around 25,000 feet, as I recall. And my job was to open up the cylinder of the, uh, of the generator and move the cylinders and, and to fasten them down in the correct way, in the correct order. And it didn't take me long. On the other hand, I was standing straddling this thing and I'm pretty sure I got a pretty good dose of radiation uh, in that. And once I loaded it, the thing was generating a lot of heat. I could feel heat just touching the cylinders. Always innovating, McCarthy helped birth modern ice climbing. He was first to use French technique to climb Pinnacle Gully. The age of laborious step cutting on steep ice was over. Around the same time, he also helped save Yosemite's Camp 4 from being shut down by the Park Service. McCarthy was known as an outspoken and tenacious Manhattan trial attorney. He served as counselor and secretary of the American Alpine Club and was president of the club from 1986 to 1988. 
In recognition of his notable place in world climbing, he was elected vice president of the International Climbing and Mountaineering Federation in 2000. In 2014, Jim McCarthy was made an honorary president of the American Alpine Club. To this day, he continues to pass along his vision, insight, and unique sense of leadership.